Welcome back to the Peerless YouTube. I am Katie North and today we're going to be painting crystals. So I have painted crystals for many years and I have to say I have been I have been making them way more complicated than they needed to be because these are the best crystals and the least amount of work that I've ever done. So I feel like I've like unlocked some magic crystal secret energy. And I'm completely obsessed with these crystals. They had great feedback when I posted it because I was too excited to wait. <laughs> um, they could not be any more simple. It's literally like two layers of paint, but using the correct tools and techniques. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial and you try these out and I can't wait to see your crystals. All right, so to get started, you're going to want to transfer your crystals onto your paper. You can either use the ones that we have provided or draw your own or look at some real crystals and kind of get a reference from there and trace them out. Or if you have a beautiful photography shape of a crystal and you can see all of the points clearly, you can outline it in pen and then transfer that into your page. Uh, just as easily, but I feel like one of the things that makes the crystals look the most realistic is getting all of those regular like realistic points and structures that are in them and all the crystals are different too. So when we're starting, usually I would do a whole base layer and kind of get some tones and things in there, but I wouldn't start to add like a darkish and this intense of a color right away. But to simplify this painting, I actually went ahead and did a lot of a lot of paint, a lot of color, and white because I knew I was going to let the salt do the natural forms and kind of where all of the color was going to hold in space. And basically the next layer is only going to be to add the depth and shadow in the right areas, but very minimal to make it look like it's a 3D. And honestly, this technique worked like far better than I ever thought it would. And this is probably some of my favorite crystals that I've ever painted just because I let the salt do its own thing and they have such a natural texture and outcome that the crystals look way more realistic than I've ever been able to paint on my own. So doing this first layer, you're just gonna kinda get some paint down and then get some of your darker kind of indigos or blues and kind of do those little snowflake flans out in there. And then when you're kind of just comfortable with the areas, you still, if you have some areas that you would like to stay white or a light in the crystal, you can use masking fluid or try not to get those areas wet with paint on that first go too. But as you can see, I'm filling up the whole thing, leaving out the white areas and then putting quite a bit of paint and a dark amount of the indigo because um, that's gonna give it the most texture and contrast between the light and the dark when the salt kind of makes those textures. All right, and so when you're happy with it and you're kind of, just as your first wash, kind of remember that too, um, you're gonna lay down your salt and kind of crack it over there. You can use table salt, you can use, I use the pink Himalayan salt in a grinder because I wanted different sizes of the salts. I could not tell you if the pink Himalayan salt does anything different or not, but it was what I had. And so that's what I used. <laughs> All right, so this smoky quartz is probably everyone's favorite and the most kind of asked questions about it. And honestly, I feel like I this painting is so cool, but I've barely did any painting to achieve how cool it is. So this is like, makes it like a zillion times cooler. Um, so for the see-through area on the top of the crystal, that's kind of more of the quartz and you can see through it and you see little strains and veins and sparkles and things, I lay down a lot of water and then on the bottom, I want a heavier amount of paint. So to get it started, I fill up the entire crystal with water and then I'm going to do my little snowflake drops of paint kind of going darker on the bottom to lighter on the top and then almost invisible on the top. Um, and then laying down the salt after I kind of get the areas of everything that I would like. So the dark brown and the black work perfectly for the smoky coarse color. Uh, also, I mean, if you ever know too, like the trans, like transparency of, of watercolor, and so most of the time when you lay a brown down or you lay a black, if you have too much water in there, it's gonna look muddy and dull, and you're not gonna get all of the, the richness that you want from those general kind of tones. For this crystal, I think one of the reasons that it works so good is that because the quartz crystal has that smoky kind of 
you know, almost black and some kind of grays and these kind of shimmers one way in a brown. So I feel like the the reason that this looks the most realistic too is because it gets that kind of um, transparent color like you would get from a brown that's not fully saturated or fully like has the depth behind it to make it like a true brown. So feel like it works exceptionally well. Uh, again, I was kind of blown away by the results because I was not expecting it to work this good. Um, so as you can see, the little snowflakes on the top, more heavier with the black and the brown that make that darker brown on the bottom. And then lay down your salt. And then now you just have to wait. You gotta wait for both of them to be 100 completely percent dry before you start your next layer because you're going to be removing the salt. All right, so as you can see, the salt has almost dried and you can see all of the texture that it created and just all of those natural forms that you're not necessarily gonna be able to do with a paintbrush. So again, a natural form, salt, and then it helps make it look more natural of a crystal. <laughs> okay, so once the salt is dried and you've brushed it all away, and you've removed the extra little pencil marks. This is my challenge for you because I never do this, but work with the painting that you have and try to do the most minimal amount of shadowing to make it look like a 3D object, uh, but leave all of that natural texture that you get from the salt. So this <laughs> this was very hard for me because i do lots of layers to achieve the looks that i want but i already knew as soon as the salt dried these crystal looks looked awesome and i love them so i just wanted to add just enough that it kind of created the shape but not overtake the texture So looking at my reference crystal, you can see how it's just slightly lighter on the right side and that kind of is like a little bit of a shimmer. So I just wanted to create that effect that I don't actually bring that dark piece all the way down into the shadowed area, but if I make that middle section and kind of create a line going all the way down and still having a little bit transparent, it'll make your eyes think that that is the flat front of the crystal without having to fill the entire section of all of that awesome texture. So just that slight difference, and then the lines going down, but those lines going down are still pretty transparent, is all that your eyes needed to kind of different, like to tell you this is the front and this is the side. So again, out of my comfort zone, because usually I put, would put a ton more paint down, and it was honestly me just trying not to cover up the salt texture, and why I credit to this amazing crystal, why it looks so cool is because it was out of my comfort zone and I did do a lot less paint than I normally do. And it honestly is the salt that did all of the work. So again, working around the crystal, just highlighting and just putting just barely a very, very translucent layer of the brown in the areas to make it look like a 3D crystal without taking the texture away. So now we're gonna work on our blue crystal. 
and I'm gonna do basically the same thing, but it's a little bit more difficult because there are three points of this crystal and not just one like the smoky quartz. So I kind of wanna add some depth and shadow and make sure that there is enough difference between the tones. And I think I do, once I kind of fill up this whole area too, I do a little bit more salt in there just to kind of add the shadow where I want it to be and then recrack the salt to let the next layer of that kind of be a natural drying instead of having you see brush strokes or like how watercolor would dry on its own and be all like, you know, which is cool. Watercolor on itself, you could probably make some cool shapes with however much water you have on the page. Um, but this is a really cool way to get natural shapes on natural things and not see like the edging of watercolor and then or brush strokes. So, and then the reference photo that I was looking at for the blue one did have some little striations and trying like movement or like lines going up it. So I did add a few of those. Um, but yeah, if you're looking at reference photos, just kind of see where they are and just kind of work around the crystal. And then like once you kind of like, you can squint too. And if you squint at something, you can kind of see if it looks like the actual thing and, and what it would look like in real life, <laughs> which is kind of funny when it's just a little out of focus, you can see the areas that need improving on or some areas that look a little bit flat. When you squint, you'll be able to see them a little bit better too. All right, so you can see here too, I fill up this whole entire kind of section of this crystal and I'm putting salt down just to kind of get those kind of textures back. This would also be a great way to do a whole crystal if you don't want to have any, the brush strokes too. Do like the first layer and then salt and then the second layer where your shadows and dimension would be and then salt if it's still wet um, and see if it can kind of work that way. But basically, I'm pretty happy with it, and I think it's pretty cool. 
Um, I'm probably going to forever do this technique for crystals because I think it turns out awesome. All right, so basically we're just doing little finishing touches. I think I put, yeah, I put a little bit more in the top of that crystal, which is like one drop of the dark brown and then salt again just to get the texture. And then instead of doing my full-on crazy amount of white highlights that I normally do, I do the opposite of Katie, <laughs> and I do just tiny, tiny flecks of it. So any areas where there's been a, it's not even a highlight, it's almost like if um, the crystal had been chipped a little bit, I'm just barely putting those like on the chips, tipped areas of the smoky quartz and then a little bit more on the blue crystal to do kind of like kind of a little little lines or cracks and then down the edges but you can see here totally minimal amount of white highlights which i think it make it look also much more realistic thank you so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends and we will see you next time